Welcome to Engineering Scale Models, where the details live. I'm Jason, your host, and the joke of the day is, what kind of chocolate do they sell at the airport? Plain chocolate. All right, all jokes aside, today we are building some photo etch pieces from Affinity Model. Um, it is their 40 millimeter quad mount bulfers. They go on United States Navy ships. This is an extremely long video. It is broken up into two parts. This is part one. I didn't get as far as I would like to in part one, but it is extremely long. There's a lot to get into, and I'm hoping part two will come out next week. So, guys, I'm just going to get the video started because this is just insanely long video. Thank you. Okay, let's talk of any models United States Navy Bull first quad mount with the shields now this is a kit it comes with six it's an all brass kit it's got photo etch it's got turn brass parts we'll look in the in the kit in a second we'll look at the instructions my goal here is to build an entire one on camera for you so you have a reference on the best techniques to do it Building these in the past, um, along with the 20 millimeter Orlikins from Affinity Models, I have found it easier to build them on the ship in general. They tend to be a little easier to build that way. So I am going to attempt to do this not on the ship. If it turns out that I need the plastic base for stability or ease to glue, glue it on, then I will get the plastic parts out and move on from there I'll stop and then I'll move on from there and I'll show you how I did that so let's take a look at what you get here so you get six in the pack you get 60 turn brass 60 brass parts two sheets of photo etch and instructions and a four sheet of instructions let's look at these instructions now the instructions can be a little confusing because there's two different types of guns that these instructions make they make an early set and a late set with shields most importantly thing, it tells you a layout of all the parts. So this is all your turn brass pieces, lots of pieces that are small and tiny. And you come down to this area here, this is done for all the guns. So whether you're building the early or the late set, you're going to do all these steps here. If you have the early, you're going to do this step, and then this step here. And then you're done with the early step, early set. If you're going to do the late set, then you do this first step here, and then you move over here to the late set with the shields, and then you're going to do all these steps. Um, like I said, I'm going to go into detail on all this. Um, and then there's also on the back are the instructions for the twin mount. So don't get those mixed up, guys. So I have twin mounts. I'll build them on, on camera also. Let's take a look at what we have in here. So let's take a look at what we have here. So like I said, you got two sheets of photo etch, each sheet makes three. So and then you have two little baggies of brass parts. So this is your sheet of photo etch here. As you can see many tiny tiny pieces. The photo etch sheet itself is only about, you can see here, I'll zoom out guys, as you can see it is only about a little over three and a quarter inches by two and a three quarters. So the pieces are tiny as you can see in comparison to the scale, the pieces are just tiny. So it takes, it takes a lot to to put these together it's, it's not easy I've done I've done a set of six and only five turned out so it happens uh, I messed up the shield and I messed up some little little itty bitty pieces like, like these pieces here I, I bend them there are extra pieces on here so of the really tiny pieces there's extra ones so um, I didn't come across any extra brass pieces so you see there's tiny barrels and then you have the mounting stands and then you have with the barrels plug into there the rectangular pieces and then you have 
just tiny pins and handles and just tiny round parts. You got a B bag and an A bag. So it's it's fiddly and, it, and it's tricky, but I, I love this aspect of photo etch. I really do. I I love the fact that these guns are all brass. A lot of other kits you get, like for mission models, you still have resin. You have a resin base and brass barrels. If you go with a Finney or uh, Alliance Model Works, you get an entire resin set of these with resin guns and resin bodies. But I like the all brass. It's a lot more work, but it really pops on the model more. So I, this is the kit. I'm going to take a pause here and I'm going to get the tools out and I'm going to go over the tools that I'm going to use um, to put these together I might add a couple tools during the process but I'm going to try to cover all the tools I'm going to use in the beginning here I use the tools that do the job if you're going to do tiny photo etch like this these tools do the job very well um, you can do it with cheaper less expensive tools it may make it may work just fine but it's going to be harder to do so in my opinion it's just going to be more difficult so again that's my opinion I'm not an expert on this I've just I built these they're, they're they look great they're not once you've done it and you have understood how to glue it together correctly and working with the tiny pieces it's not it's not that bad so I want to stop here and then I'm going to get the tools set up these are my tools for working with photo etch in general. I, I have some extra tools like bigger benders and things like this, but this is everything I'm going to use for working with this photo etch on these little kits, this little kit here. So uh, it's it it's what I use. Uh, some people think it's overkill. I, I think it works, and I'm a big fan of what works. So optimizer with lights. It's it's super helpful. Um, I think it's a three times 3.5 magnification with a 20 inch depth of field. So it is um, it's pretty good. I'm not sure if that's what it is. I think that's what it is. It's been a while since I've had I've had that for a while. So, but it's it's high magnification and it's got a good depth of field on it. Um, I use the Tamiya bending pliers. They're not 100% uh, the best in the world but they do the job but more so I will use these cheap dollar store square nose non marring pliers they they work very well for holding apart to file off the nubs um, bending certain bends and things like that um, a lot of the times uh, with this little photo etch the pliers come in handy for sanding off the nubs and some maybe some of the bigger bends but that's not what I use to bend these little parts. I'll show you that. Now. Um, you can use a little photo wedge bender like this to bend the shields and things like that. Not super important. What is important is these three items here. Tweezers. These are watchmaker tweezers. If you can see that there, they have a when you squeeze them together the tips don't open that's very important so and it doesn't take very much pressure to close them and hold a piece so you're not going to get hand fatigue when you're trying to carefully just ever so slightly hold a part there while you get some glue on it it is um, very important I have a set of these I have about 10 pairs different sizes and just these are fantastic um, I also have a curve pair that I use these are the ones that I use most of the time but um, if you, I don't know if I have another pair of tweezers to show you what I'm talking about here there's my Tamiya tweezers here they are if you look at the way these Tamiya tweezers close you see when they close it there's a, a bigger gap here so when they close they tend to want to shoot the part off and it takes a lot of force because they're so thick to want to close them so on uh, really tiny photo etch you can crush the photo etch or mar it with 
you know, cameo pliers are good for bigger parts and things like that, but ever since I've got these watchmaker pliers, um, these are much better. You can hold teeny tiny things, not ping it across the room as easily, and they work out great. Another pair of tweezers, these are from Tamiya. These are bending tweezers. As you can see, they're square on the jaw. They meet up perfectly, and if you squeeze them, they flatten out perfect, and you can make teeny tiny bends. They're even square on the front there. Tiny photo etch like this, I will bend most things with these. I will use these to bend most of it because it's just it's just that easy so that's tweezers um, I normally don't pick parts up with tweezers I normally use wax pencils and I use two different kinds here I use this one you sharpen with a exacto knife it's got a little bit of more of a blunt tip on it you can shape the tip with warming up your finger. This is beeswax. I don't like grease pencils. Some people say, oh, use a grease pencil. Um, if you're painting your model and you get a grease pencil on there, yeah, you're in trouble. So I like this um, beeswax. It doesn't seem to have an issue too much. So, But these right here, these are wax pencils that can go in a pencil sharpener. So as you can see, I put this in my pencil sharpener and I got a really, really fine tip. And I've used these since I've had the perfect tip. But if you just I have a pencil sharpener, I sharpen it and it gets a super fine tip and you can pick up the teeniest, tiniest pieces of photo etch and place them into place. So, and you place them into place. I either use a pair of tweezers to push them down or I, well, it's not in here. So I don't really use it that often. That's why it's not in here. So, um, Cutting out my photo etch, I use this cutting system from the small shop. It's a black um, piece of Lexan and a acrylic clear thing to hold it down so the piece doesn't fly away when you cut it off. And everybody has their opinion on what to cut on. Some people say glass, tile, um, plastic. I, I use this piece of Lexan and I'm fine, I don't care. I use scalpel blades, they're cheap, I'll buy new ones. Um, I don't I, I haven't had a problem with it. I've cut on glass. I don't like cut do not cut on glass. I mean, your opinion, if you think glass is great, cut on it. I don't like to cut on that. I like to cut on ceramic tiles either. Um, for cutting, I have a few different options. This is a retractable exacto blade. It has its uses. Um, I guess it, it has its uses. So not a all-time thing. I also use three different scalpel blades. I have a number 15, a 15C, and a number 9. So again, they all have a purpose for what they, uh, they do. My new favorite toy is this micro scalpel from Micromark. This is super tiny and it cuts the photo etch out fantastically getting in those tiny little tight spaces like on an infinity model sheet so there's that and then also if you got safety and concern and disposing of scalpel blades a 15 blade works great for cutting most photo etch out you can get them in these pen blades that retract and then you can throw them away and they won't hurt anybody um, you get these on Amazon in a 10 pack and they last pretty long. I can do I can do pretty much a whole project on a box. So, and then you know I have my extra micro scalpel blades here um, for cleaning my nubs off. I use the Tamiya Diamond File for photo etch. It works great. Uh, Zeron photo etch shears shears work great, but all these teeny tiny pieces, it's hard to work with them and get into things like that. So like I said. And I, I keep most of my main photo etch tools in this, in this box here. Now let's talk about gluing these up. So, and I normally just slide it under my, in front of my desk and then I uh, have it out when I need it. So, let's talk about gluing photo etch. Everybody has their method of gluing photo etch. I use a range of super glues. 
I have a brand I like. It is Starbond. They make a they make a lot, but super fast thin, medium thick, and medium is what I tend to use. And to apply them, I use a variety of blunt needles. These are 25 gauge, 20 gauge, and 30 gauge. I have 37 gauge, but I can't find them, so that's going to hurt later. But the 30 gauge is super tiny. You're only probably going to get the extra thin through there, but I've made my bottles so these stick on the bottle, and I can squeeze the teeniest, tiniest drop from the extra thin into the spot I want to put it at. Now that's not always the best option. I also have a zip kicker in a bottle that I can put a needle on that I can get the smallest drop of zip kicker. I just decant it in one of these bottles and I can put whatever size needle I want for whatever size drop of zip kicker I want. That um, is roughly the gluing situation. Now, I like to dip my parts in glue. This is from Ming. I have to admit, this was given to me. So, it's alright. Um, the applicators that it came with, I don't, I have never used. Um, they, they, they don't, they're photo etched, they don't appeal to me if I want they're like glue loopers I if I'm going to use something like a glue looper I'm going to use a glue looper so <coughs> excuse me so you put on your drop of super glue here and it'll stay on top of these little plugs that come out and you just burn it off when you're done or scrape it off when you're done I pile it up until it gets too bad and then I take it off and you can dip the end of your part in it with the pair of tweezers and then stick it into place if you want something thicker that has more of an instant grab I use this IC gel and I'll squirt a little bit onto here and then I will use a brass toothpick these are from MIG ammo by MIG and I will you know dip the toothpick in there and then spread it where I need to spread it and stick the part in there this has a little bit more grab um, before it dries you get a little less positioning time but it has a it has a bite grab on it so if you're putting your barrels on it'll it'll the barrels will stick and then you can adjust them to be straight whereas if you use thin glue you try to let go with the tweezers to adjust them to be straight they're gonna it's gonna dry too quick or they're just gonna fall off because it didn't have any grip this was give you a little bit of grip this is for like gluing um, coral up on a wall. It's, it sticks very quickly. Um, and it, it works great. Learning to work with two tweezers, learning, learning to work with tweezers in your left hand, if you're right handed in your left hand, if you're left handed in your right hand, um, becomes very, very useful to hold the part like so and then this for example like I will hold the part that I need to add something to with the tweezers like this I will take the other tweezers dip it in the glue and then I'll have both elbows on the table I'll normally be down here like this both arms locked in and then I will touch the two together if I know I can get the joint there quickly I will put the glue on this side and I will put a little bit of zip kicker on this part and then when I touch it, it will be an almost instantaneous bond. So that's 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 my tips with tools and glue. Um, when you're working with tiny photo etch and super glue, uncure debonder, Bob Smith Energy debonder works great. It'll get the parts off your tools. So you're gonna inevitably glue them to your tweezers. It'll get them off. Um, I don't recommend using this on your workbench. I recommend um, gluing over something that you don't care to lose. I use a sheet of aluminum like so. I glue all my photo etch on this. 
so if it sticks I can just put a little debonder on the aluminum and not debond the part I just glued and then get it off of the aluminum most of the time I can just pop it off with aluminum with a razor blade and I don't have that issue so that's up to you guys what you want to do um, I used to do it on a piece of thick Teflon I got for my old job but it, it got too badly damaged it, Teflon super glue doesn't stick to Teflon or polypropylene so if you want to glue on polypropylene or Teflon more power to you that will um, keep you from bonding your parts to to your table working with a cutting mat you're going to glue it to the cutting mat it's 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 a no you're going to drop a part with super glue on it and it's going to stick to your cutting mat and then you're just you're asking for trouble so preparation is is a key step in building these models understanding the instructions having the right tools preparation and then having a plan to go about um, doing it sometimes you may only want to cut out one piece of photo etch at a time whereas sometimes you need multiple pieces to get them all aligned correctly um, depending on what what the situation is but these are basic tools all these tools work with all photo etch but um, I work a lot in the 1 350th scale and a lot of the photo etch is this tiny and some are even closer on the frets than these and you can have a lot of issues so if you work with bigger photo etch, you, you know, you use some snips to cut them out, things like that. How I how I got better with my photo etch is I bought a bunch of cheap 1 700th Alliance Model Works kits um, on eBay. They were like $2 a piece. And I sat there and I glued up a bunch of train stations in 1 700th scale. The pieces were super thin, super tiny. I messed up probably 70% of them, but I learned a lot and I'm able to do the actual photo etch for my models now without having too many issues like I said I ruined one of these guns I ruined one of these guns the last time I built six I the fifth one just didn't work out it the base was crushed a little bit and the shield was all bent up so um, I ruined one so I always have a little I always have a one pack extra for that purpose so Plus, I build a lot of United States Navy ships, so I always have those lying around because it's the only gun upgrades I use anymore. So, all right, guys, we're gonna start building this in the next segment. Okay, we got step one to do on these quad mount, and if you see here, this is what we're doing. We need some brass barrels. We need the block, brass block BS02 and then a piece of photo etch that's going to be bent a certain way and go on top and then I'm going to put that in there so I'm going to gather up the stuff right now so put this out to, off to the side here and we'll look at what we have here now we need this little guide up here and BS2 is that has the motor drive in it these are it right here so it's in brass parts A I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna get my tweezers and my little dish here and I'm gonna pull out what I need so I need I'm just gonna we have to build two of these for each gun I'm just gonna pull out the parts for one right now you don't need me to build all of them on camera so I'll build one on camera one off camera and then we'll move to the next step then we have two barrels okay so that's that and now we need part 12 come over here to our photo etch Uh, part 12, huh? Part 12 doesn't look like what's on the sheet of paper. Let's see if you can see this here. Oh, blurry there. 
right here is part 12 right here you can't see the number but this right here is part 12 it's also marked part 12 up here but if you look at the paper it says this is part 12 right here it looks nothing like that part at all that part 12 looks like okay so it, it, it's labeled I was looking at the I was looking at the twin mount guys it's part 8 we need that's my bad it, I got the pages mixed up so it's part 8 it's labeled right on the sheet they mix them up I figured they, all the parts would be mostly the same but they they mix them up on the sheet so it is part 8 not part 12 that is my mistake as you can see even though you've built these many times you can make mistakes so what I'm going to do is I am going to cut this out with my teeny tiny micro scalpel here we need part 8 which is right here So we got the part loose. Hopefully that was on camera and I didn't get my optivisor in the way. So we'll take that part out. Just put it in our little dish right there. Alright, so let's zoom out a little bit and go up. Wow, that was a mess. Okay, so we got our part 12. We're going to need another part in a minute, but we got... This is basically this first step right here. This first step right here. Now we need to bend part 8. So let's grab part 8 out of this dish. Make sure it's cleaned up. No, it's not. So I need to do a little cleanup on this. Um, Tammy a diamond file. Just gonna do a little bit of cleanup on it here. Alright. Just clean up the connection points, make it a neater model. These quad mount bolfers, they can be finicky guys. Teeny tiny pieces. It's all cleaned up now so now I have this piece and it needs a bend in it looks like it gets bent downward let's see where the bend line is okay so it's gonna get bent down so I'm just gonna use I mean you can use nice Tamiya bending pliers but I got these at the dollar store and work for this purpose so I got it bent and I dropped it um, let's see here let's pick it back up so now this is gonna go on top of this like so Like that. Well, oh, not like that. Well, it's going to sit on there, and we're going to need to clean up the edge of these barrels first so they fit in because it has you cutting a little bit off. 
but let's just see what the fit looks like with nothing trimmed on it. It's actually pretty good. Just a little bit of cleanups needed. It's kind of a loose fit. It's not a real tight fit. So you're going to have to, you know, really glue it and then make sure they're perfectly straight with each other and square. So as you can see that there. It's a little, little flimsy. We'll go ahead and put the other one in. So you now this one has a goober on the end of it that it's going to have to be cleaned up. I don't know. Oh, I almost lost it there. See, this what's good about these watchmaker pliers. It doesn't shoot the parts off. Let's see if you can see this here. You see that bent part on the end of the, the barrel right there. Yeah, I'm just gonna. Yeah, you see that? That is the part that needs to be taken off. So I'm just gonna grab it here. I'm gonna hit it with my file. Alright, so I'll show it to you now, guys. As you can see here, it is all cleaned up. And now it will fit into this piece here. Now, normally, you don't have to do this on camera. And you can work two tweezers at a time. But... I have to do it on camera so I have to use one of my hands but that's basically one barrel wow this is it it's very finicky guys and then there's the other barrel now I would put these in with some super glue and then make sure they're perfectly lined up make sure they're perfectly lined up let that sit and dry for a little bit and then glue on that number eight piece so that's basically the first step I am going to do that off camera because it's glue drying time and basically I'm just going to dab the end of the bulfer into the glue stick it in the barrel and line it up straight I'm probably going to use some of this um, Bob Smith Energy Instant Cure IC gel because it seems to work good in filling gaps and holding quickly so that's what I'm going to do there so I'm going to go off camera I'm going to do that and then when we come back that piece will be done and we'll move on to step two Okay, folks, we are back with the next section. I have built these little sections here. They have the two guns on them, and they have the little top piece. Sorry about the camera shake. So they have the two little top sections, the top section, and that's part eight, and then the barrels and the little block the barrels go in. So I have made two of these. That's what we need for the instructions. Now the next part of the instructions is a little bit tricky. I, this is going to be a long process to film this. So we are basically on the second part, which is this section right here. This little part nine has to be folded a certain way and inserted into this section here. 
So, and then part seven is going to go on there, and then nine goes on twice. So the instructions are a little bit confusing. And then it says seven, and you can see seven is also right there. So we'll deal with that in a minute. But right now we're working on this part nine right here. So I have done this in stages, so it's not 50 cuts to different shots. So I will show you on the piece of photo etch where part nine is. It is these teeny tiny pieces here. This part nine. And then I will show you them cut out next to a dime. They are tiny. Oh, there goes the dime. I got the camera on an angle here. Um, teeny, 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 tiny. Okay. Now, let me show you here. It folded. Oh, I bumped it. I got my Optivisor on, so I'm going to be bumping this camera. So, this is the part folded here. Try to grab it in a way that you can see that it's been folded. Let me lighten that up a little bit. So, as you can see, I folded the part and there's a art to folding this. Teeny tiny tweezers help. Um, so I'm going to use a combination of tweezers here, and I'm gonna. I bent those two off camera, and they were they were some kind of some kind of fun. Let me tell you. So I'm gonna just move the camera this way just a bit, so I can get into the shot here. I'm going to zoom in on this and I'm going to attempt to bend this on camera. So, first thing you want to do is grab a hold of your part. Now, I don't know if this is going to show up, but there is a little fold line on one side. In the middle, there's a two fold line. And then there's a little fold line right there. And it is tiny. So first I'm going to take my bending tweezers from Tamiya. And I'm going to position this. And I'm going to pull it away so I can see it in my Optivisor real quick. To make sure I have it lined up perfect. Okay, so I have it lined up in there, and I'm just going to bend that up at a 90 degree angle, like, like that. There's going to be a lot of focusing issues, guys. I'm, I'm truly sorry about that. These, these parts are incredibly small, incredibly small. So I'm going to put it in my hand. I'm just going to check it real quick. Okay, now it needs to be bent twice in the middle there. So for that, I'm going to use my teeny tiny tweezers. And I'm going to do the outer bend first. I'm going to line it up like that. And then I'm going to bend it up like that. Just like that. And then I'm going to bend the other side up like that and squeeze it a little bit. Now you can do this with two pairs of tweezers if you are afraid you're going to mess it up. But basically that's what you're going for. And then this piece right here will sit into, if I can grab a hold of the gun and position it correctly. I don't know if I can zoom in anymore. Let's find out. Nope. Let's try there. There we go. So this is going to sit right there. Oh, it's stuck to my tweezers. Well, it's going to sit right on top of See, this is what I'm talking about. Trying to do this in general is a pain in the butt. But trying to do it, okay. 
So I'm not going to be here to do this part on camera, but you're going to glue them with the more of the little fingers sticking up, one here, one here, and then the same thing on the other gun. And I am truly sorry that I can't do this on camera. But as you can see, this is a dime, an American dime, and these pieces are extremely small. I mean, there's them bent up in a little dish. They are tiny. I bent two off camera just to get used to bending them. I have one more to bend and then I will glue them on and I will come back and you guys can see what they look like on and then we'll work on the next part. So back in a sec guys. Okay we have gotten the, this step done here and put these on and I'll show you that right here as you can see that has been placed on there so it gets two of those with the little teeth in the back like that so that's that section it gets two of those each one gets two of those and then next is this little number seven piece here that needs to be cut off and curved and it's just a slight curve um, you can see it more down here when it's placed on to the side like that so um, I bent them slightly on a mat with a little round rod and I'll show you them on here first so this is these right here it's these tiny pieces here seven I lost one they give you extra they give you three extra so be careful I already lost one and I'm on my first set of guns so um, there are extra pieces on here so there's extra a lot of things that are tiny and need to be folded nice and neat so let's show you what I got on these here there's one and I'm just going to just this exposure a little bit zoom in it's too much and then I'm going to put a dime down so you can see the size reference here of how tiny these parts are so that's how tiny it is and I will pick it up with the tweezers and I will try to show you the bend in it as you can see there's a slight curvature slight curvature to it it's very hard to see but that is going to get glued to the end of this gun uh, I can hold both these with two tweezers manipulating two tweezers and a camera is tricky all right here we go they're both in the shot now and then it's gonna go on right there like so so like I said I can't glue these on camera because it's just it's hard enough to build these not filming it but filming them on camera I'm um, basically cut it out uh, put a slight curve in it and then glue it on to the end and then next we are going to move on to placing this number 10 piece here which is gonna we need two of those it's gonna get cut off folded and glued on and then we can start folding up uh, number four and number three. So, and then we're going to put in a number five. So the four goes on one side and the three goes on the other based on where this hole is here. There's a little hole there. So you have to make sure you get the hole lined up correctly. But we'll get that we'll get that done. We won't attach them yet, and then we'll start working on the base down here. And we'll be done with this first step. All right, guys, I'll be back. Okay, so here's where we're at. This is going to be an extremely long video because I want to do this in depth build of one of these 40 millimeters. So this is taking a little longer than I anticipated, and I'm sorry it's taken so long for me to actually get this out. But we are on basically this part right here, this part 10. And um, I cut them out of the, the fret. And I've bent one, and I'm going to show you what one looks like here. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to show you something that 
you should have seen, I should have done beforehand. On the back of these brackets here, I don't know if you can see this, but that one has been filed down. And if you look at this one right here, has a little nub on the end of it that is going to prevent this part from sticking to it. So I'm basically just taking my Tamiya file and just running it across there just to knock that nib off so this part 10 fits, fits smoothly. So, and if the sounds in and out on this, I'm sorry, it's done in multiple clips. I'm really trying, guys. I really am. I want to deliver quality stuff to you, and I'm trying real hard, guys. So, I'm going to take this part here, and I am going to flip it so I can see the bend right there. I'm going to take my Tamiya bending pliers. You gotta remember, these parts are ridiculously small. I'm gonna bend it. And I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna pinch it. And I'm gonna try to get in here with the bending pliers. Give it a squeeze. I'm hoping you guys caught all that instead of my big fingers. Because proportionally, my fingers are huge compared to this little part. So that's the little part right there. That's the part next to a dime. They are tiny, and I mean tiny. So it's basically the elevation. I was gonna say it's a latching system, but if we take a look at this part and the gun like so, so and like I said before, it's a double tweezer thing. You're going to dip this part into glue. And then you're going to bring them together. I recommend an optivizer for this. Until they stick. Now if you're really good with placement, you can put a little kicker on this gun part. And then the glue on this part, and when they stick, it'll be an instant bond. You just got to make sure you get your alignment perfect. Again, like I said in the previous, I cannot glue these on camera. They are just way too tiny. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little gluing rig here, which is crazy how big everything else is around this. I'm going to put a little dollop of my IC gel onto one of these posts, dip my part in, stick it, and then I am going to move on to cutting out four, three, two fives. So I'm going to cut out four, three, and two fives, and then we will bend those up, adding in these pieces, which doesn't give you a really good spot where they go. Looks like it goes in these little slots facing upwards right there. Let's give you a good shot. Doesn't even give you one on the back side. So, but I think it'll go together well. So I'm gonna pop back in in a second. Okay, again, we are dealing with some tiny finicky parts. I'll fix the exposure on that, sorry about that. All right, here we go. We are working this piece here. I have already done, I have already done four and added five to it. I've cut them out. And I'm gonna show you how I did that with three here. And three is gonna go on the other quad mount. And I haven't glued it on yet because I wanna be able to position the height and angle correctly. So, as I said um, in a previous clip, I think building these from the base up w would be 
better because you could get things more aligned I would believe so I want to try that in a future um, I have so many of these to build I, I have no idea how many are on the Alaska but as you can see I have this on there it's still loose and it moves there so I'm going to pick this up and move it out of the way and then when I get it in the angle and position I want I'm not sure yet I'm gonna just put a dot of extra thin on it so I'm gonna come in here to this little one I'm gonna adjust the exposure it's a little bit better all right here we go I'm gonna take this part right here drop it drop it again and not try to lose it because there are no extra ones of these so let's see okay now there's something it doesn't tell you on the instructions it basically tells you to bend here here and that's it but there's these two little tabs on the end here right there and right there they have to be bent towards the inside so that they lock into holes onto the the actual gun mount so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to do this here sorry if I bump the camera it's because of the optivisor guys I'm sorry if you ever tried to film something and build something at the same time you will understand the difficulty in that especially with something that is so small I'm trying to keep it on camera zoomed in and that compensation is bad all right so and then making changes on the fly so I'm gonna line that up and I'm gonna bend that to a 90 come over to this side here it's not Bend that up like that. So that is now bent the way it needs to be bent. And now we have to insert part five, which is this guy right here. Now, this is going to be the tricky part. First time it went pretty well. Let's see how well it goes here. Okay, so there's going to be two slots. I don't know if you're going to be able to see them. I don't know if it's going to focus. It wants to focus on that dime. There's a slot right there. There's a matching slot on the other side. So, and I'm going to attempt to slide. And I have to use my optivisor. So, I'm inevitably going to hit the camera. And I haven't found a video of these being assembled in this level of step-by-step -step on YouTube. So, if you guys find another video, especially if someone doing it better or a better idea, please leave it in the comments below because I would love to see somebody else do this just to make sure I was doing it correctly. So I'm going to attempt to pick this gun up with these tweezers and stick on. It's just there's so many there's so many parts stuck to this little gun mount here now that it gets real tricky to do anything. Cuz you got to make sure the two holes, you see the two holes. It focuses in on this. See there's a hole there there's a hole there it's hard to see I can't tell if you can see it on the screen but you're gonna lock in these into those holes when you get them locked in give it a little squeeze Alright, 
So now, oh, I'm having some serious focus issues here, guys. Sorry. So now they can rock up and down, and they are on there. So I'm going to grab this where I can. I'm going to put that down before I break it all off. So there we go. We have two guns there. Zoom out, come up a little bit. Fix the balance. Fix it on this. So we have that done. So now I am going to attempt to do this whole step here. This whole step here, I'm going to cut out two and four, and then we'll attach them. We'll add six and BS3 to the bottom. We'll add six and BS3 to the bottom. And then we will get 13s out. Looks like 12s are... Okay, it looks as if... Oh, and by the way, I haven't put 7 on yet because it's got to interact with 13 here. So I'm hoping once I get the guns mounted and at the angle I want, I can add all these 13, 12, and 7 all in there at the, once I have the guns set at the angle I want. So I want to build this platform. I want to get the guns glued, the base of the guns over here glued to the platform. And then I can roll 13 and put 12 and number 7 into into place after I have these glued to the base and I have something more to work with because there is nothing to work with on these guns they're just so tiny so I'm gonna get that done guys okay we are back we have these pieces here um, one two and then we have the tweezers out here one, two, six, and then this brass piece here. And I went ahead and cut out 13 and 12, and then we still have seven up here to put on. I'm gonna try to get this this last section done. I'm gonna label this as part one. Then we're gonna call it, because it's pretty long, and I'll do part two next week, because it's already late in the week, and I wanna get this out this week. So um, let's get started here. I'm gonna zoom in here, and I'm gonna just the brightness. So here's what we have here. We have to bend these pieces here so let's do that now now if I'm gonna bring this back in so on two well it's gonna it's gonna wash out here on two it looks like we have to bend this back section down and then these three sections square up so I know I'm changing the brightness on it all the time but so it has to be done. So this is going to get uh, bent down, put the optifizer on. Okay, so let's see here. So I'm going to bend this down first with these bending tweezers here. Can you even? Is this even gonna focus? There it goes. So I'm gonna bend this down here, like so, at a 90. Then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna bend this long one upwards first. And this one upwards at a 90 just like that and I'm going to come in here and bend make sure I grab it the right way so I don't bend on to okay so and this needs to just to be bent a little more at a 90. I'm gonna break it off. I can feel it. All right, so there's two is done, is bent all up. 
So now we're going to bend um, number one. Now we're going to pick this up. Okay, if we take a look at, I believe it goes this way. It goes this way. I'm going to have to zoom out just a smidge, guys, because of the focusing issue. So there's that, and it appears that okay, there is diamond skid plate on this side. As you can see that diamond skid plate there. So it all gets bent away from the diamond skid plate all the pieces so I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna bend everything up it says bend it down but I could flip it over and bend everything up so now I don't know if this is the best order to do that in but I'm just gonna bend some pieces up here Hopefully getting all this on camera. Now see I should have bent these see I should have bent these inner pieces first so that I can do it, but I'll get by. See they should have been bent first, but it's alright. So for this longer bend, I'm gonna get some longer bending pliers. These are Tamias, they were there. They were there to grab, so I just grabbed them. I smacked the camera with the optimizer. Sorry about that, guys. So, just bend that up. I mean, Tammy and bending pliers work great for larger sections, but these little bending pliers, I mean, I love them to death. Oh, I dropped it. So now we're just going to bend these up here. Now, when you ha when you have pieces like this, that are section like that, you can use a photo edge bender that will get in there. But the bending pliers, the smaller bending pliers, you can just grab them and take them like that. So what I do is I start the bend with the tweezers, like that, and then you can grab it with the tweezers or the bending pliers. It's your call, however you want to do it. These pieces are tiny. So now that we have that, this is going to go on to this section here. Like, oh, like this here, and it's going to lock in in these three sections in the middle here. So you're going to have seat in these three middle sections. Again, this may be a glue on camera thing, but if you see those three sections right there, that's where, oh, and I had that upside down. I had it upside down, guys. So the, the, the folds, wow, I totally bent this the wrong way. I was supposed to bend it with the the detail up so well, um, yeah so I'm gonna attempt to rebend it if it breaks then I will get another piece there's no extras of these but that's why you gotta pay attention to the way you bend it so yeah it broke off so um, I'm going to attempt to salvage this. Yeah, they all broke off. In future, I will, um, I will pay attention to that, guys. So, like, that one was able to be rebent. So, I could probably just glue on those side pieces. You're really not going to notice the side pieces. 
don't think. So now we can put this on there like so. And that, and that would get glued and then we would glue on this piece here would be glued onto this section here to thicken it up just like so glue that there like that you could probably glue that on first to make it a little easier and then glue this piece on there to make it a little a little bit easier glue all glue all that up first like that and then put that front section on with a little bit of glue from behind or on there and then we will put the guns on so I'm gonna glue this piece up show it to you glued up take some photographs and then we're gonna put the guns on it and we are gonna do a couple more things and we're gonna call it for this video okay we are here we've glued this together let me show you this and we are now ready to attach the the quad mounts to it so I said we have all we have the bottom plate on the bottom ring on we have all of that good to go and I'm going to attach the guns to it glue my so now you have to make sure when you attach these guns that the hole for these right here let me show you pick it up this hole right there let's zoom in guys that this hole stop the camera shake and zoom in there there's a hole right there where the, the tip of the tweezers there's a hole right there that needs to be on the outside of your of your quad mounts so what I'm going to do is I will attempt to glue this on camera so what I have here is I have some Loctite um, super glue gel right there it's fresh I just put it on there to glue this bottom on I'm going to hold this in my hand like this and this one would go right here so I'm going to put that one down and pick up the other one because I want to put that far one on first and remember the gun is still loose so this is gonna this is gonna go on there like that let me zoom in and lighten it up so, like I said, they're not complicated to build, but trying to build them and film it at the same time is the trick of the hour. So, I'm going to hold this like this, and then I'm going to dip that in the glue how I want to. Just like that. And I'm going to peer through my Optivisor and hope this is on camera. Yeah, this is finicky. And make sure you actually get glue on it because there wasn't any glue there, guys.
Okay, so this is, I'm gonna get me some more glue. Cause I didn't think I had enough. Might have to use that IC set gel glue. This should work. Don't get the sweet tweezers stuck in. <sighs> okay, so I'm just, I took the gun off apparently because it comes off very easily. And I'm just gonna glue this, this mount on first. Should have did that in the first place. So, there, just like that. Get that glued in. Just like that. Well, oh, you get the idea. This is why you want to use a slower setting adhesive so you have time to position it into place. Okay, so again, uh, trying to glue it on camera is a joke. That's not going to be a thing that happens. So when I come back, um, I'm going to have these two glue. Actually, I'm going to cut it right here because when we start the next part two, um, we are going to have it all glued up, basically. And we are going to have it all glued up, and we are going to move on to the second set of instructions. But this is the social media links for the channel. You can follow me on Instagram. I'll be posting some pictures of the finished work today before this video goes up. So you guys can um, see some photos of this, uh, slideshows, and on the Facebook page and all that good stuff. If you'd like to support the channel, you can visit me on my Patreon page and support the channel that way. Um, every little bit helps. There's also giveaways. I'll be drawing the winner for the giveaway uh, this Saturday, the day this video goes out or the day after this video goes out. And I'll be announcing the winner the following Monday or this coming Monday. So thank you guys so much. And our Engineering Scale Models, I'm your host, Jason. Have a fantastic day.